how and why the Hebrew Bible is not sexist. There's some, I've heard one, one, um, one black man has said, he said, you know, one reason why he's, you know, not so much into like the Bible or the Hebrew narrative, he says, it's because, you know, that there's, there, there's no place for the divine like feminine, you know? So we've heard this rhetoric often where they say, well, unlike say maybe ancient Egypt or unlike other ancient civilizations and culture, when it comes to like the Judeo-Christian, you know, like say the Bible, like just take the King James Bible, you know, Old Testament, New Testament, that the, the feminine, you know, there's no divine feminine and the, the feminine is, um, is like, is, is a misogynistic, they use terms like misogyny, misogyny, you know, against the woman in the Bible. But when we heard this one, um, I think it was, the one they call Brother Jabari, you know, so if ones and ones, you know, can let him check this out, right, right here. Now, to that particular point, yes, if we come from the just the conventional status quo, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, um, perversion, you know, the version that's really a perversion, you know, whitewashed Christianity that we've been used to for 400 years, plus years, then yeah, we, we get that, yeah, it, it is there, you know, in other words, what that per perspective and view that one say that there's no divine feminine there, but in the Hebrew scripture, we'd like to just show and prove the divine feminine in the Hebrew Bible, right? The divine feminine. So there is a balance. There's, we have that in the first chapter where he says, let us make man, right? Us, who's the us there, right? Who's the us there? There's a lot of different theories and, you know, among some of the Jews and different ones, they speculate on, you know, who the us is speaking about. Some say that it's the angels. Uh, others say that it's, 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 it's like Jesus, Jesus Christ, like the Son, the Word, right? Others say like it's, it's, it's a council of like divine beings or something. They, that they're reasoning among themselves, like let's make man. So they're interpreting the Elohim in the plurality, even though the verb is in singularity. But most ones don't really read the Hebrew. But when we come from a Hebrew perspective, we have the divine feminine. The divine feminine in the Hebrew Bible, right? In the very beginning, right? And also throughout the Bible. But there's a lot of things that get lost in translation, right? And especially in the mistranslation. So here, let's just go here for one moment and just kind of show and prove this. We've touched on this elsewhere, but let's see if we can just kind of show and prove this right here. We're going to go to my sword right here, right? And in my sword right here, let us, um, let us type this right here in. And let's look at beginning, right? We're gonna prove it right here in the beginning, right? In the very beginning of the, the Hebrew Bible, right? So we're gonna use the KJV, right? And here with the with the um, my sword software, we're searching KJV, and you can see the hyperlinks right there. That's like the strong concordance, right? So here is the first verse, the very first verse. Right in the Hebrew Bible, we say like, the first book of Moshe, the Hebrew book that's known as Bereishis, Bereishis. Right, even the enunciation, the pointing of it is the key. Right, Bereishis, Bereishis, which is often interpreted as in the beginning. And those who really know Hebrew, right, I'm talking about the Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew, truly know Hebrew, right, will know that it says Bereishis in beginning, not in the beginning. Right in the beginning, but bereishis, bereishis in beginning, right? Bereishis bara, right? Elohim et ha shemaim wa et ha aretz. That's the Hebrew of it. This is one verse right here, right? In the reishis. Now I want you to look at this word reishis carefully right here. This is the very first word in Hebrew, reishis. Now the preposition, the be. Right? B means in a beginning or a reishith, right? Barashith would be in the, but it's not barashith, right? It is bereishith. Now, there's a key with the pointing, right? And we could get into the whole pointing of the Hebrew pointing, right? Because some say, okay, it's something that in a formalization way, we have it in A.D., Right? But we also have to recognize the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews and also the Ge'ez and also the way that we can preserve, you know, sounds, right? And the proper pointing of sounds in other languages and linguistics, right, of the people of the book, right? So some of the Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Shemitic languages. But here with the Hebrew, we have the H7225, Reishith, 
right ray sheath now you see the phonetics kind of brings out more or less the proper pointing of it ray ray sheath ray sheath b ray sheath b is from b a preposition in on by way of in on by way of it's a preposition in on by way of so here the bdb the brown drivers briggs definition says first because elsewhere we have this word in hebrew in other places but this is like the first word of the hebrew bible proves the divine feminine right in the beginning the hebrew divine feminine in the beginning right in the very beginning now if you read the hebrew as we read and study hebrew there is the masculine and there's the feminine right some words and concepts and ideas are either masculine or they're feminine What's interesting is that the word Torah, the word Torah, right? The word for scripture, Torah, right? Well, the word for, actually, it's often translated as law, but we bring it out as instruction, direction, the Torah. The Torah itself, the word, is feminine. So the Torah, the law, is she, right? Also, we have the earth as she. We have the soul, the soul, right? And male or female, the nefesh, is she as well. Now, I don't know if one's like, the one they call Brother Jabari. I don't know if he's acquainted with that. I don't know whether some of the other camps of some of the Hebrews and the Israelites, you know, I don't know whether they're acquainted with that as well. You know what I mean? But these are just some basic facts. These are like first principles. Right? This is milk. This is actually milk right here. My first beginning, best chief beginning, first chief choice part. Now the word right here, Right here, Strong's, right? Notice right there. This is, proves it. Ray Sheath is a noun feminine. Did you see this right here? A noun feminine. So, in a noun feminine, right? Elohim, right? Elohim, which means literally, it would mean powers, right? Powers. Bara, bara is the verb. He, the powers. He, singularity, the powers. Be Ray Sheath. Right? So in the noun feminine, that means beginning, right? the first. Right? So we have this here, as it shows right here from the H7218. Let's click on that. This is Rosh. Now, Rosh corresponds right, in the other Afro-Asiatic languages of the people of the book. Right? We have the G'is, right? the Ethiopic, R'is, R'is. In the Arabic, is Ra'is, Ra'is. Right? In Amharic is Ras, Ras, right? So we have Rosh, right? Rosh is head, right? Let's look at this. Rosh, the BDB, Browns, Drivers, Briggs brings out head, the top. Now you go to the top of the mountain, you go to the Rosh of the Har, the mountain, right? Rosh Hahar, right? The summit, the upper part, the chief, the total, the sum, the height, the front, the beginning. So the word literally can mean, it means head, like the head, you know, like somebody has a head. Right? But also in other senses of the language and the spirit of the language can also refer to the top of something, the summit, the upper part, the chief. Like a chief is a rosh, like a ras, a chief. A total or sum. What's the rosh? Give me the rosh. Give me the head of the matter. Give me the total, the sum. Right? Rosh being the top, the height. Rosh is also the front. The front of something is the head. Right? Or in context, the beginning is the rosh. So you can see right here that this word Rosh in the Hebrew corresponding with the Amharic Ras. We're going to say Ras. We say Rastafari Ras. Right? Ris. Ris. And the Ga'as. The Ethiopic. Right? And Ra'is. Ra'is. Like um, we have some Yemenis brethren. Right? Yemenis brethren. And they often refer to me as Ra'is. Ra'is. But then Ra'is in Arabic can also mean president because that's the first one. Right, the president, right? So the head, the head of man is Rosh. The top, the tip of a mountain is Rosh. The height of stars is the Rosh, is the head. The chief, the head of a man, of a city, of a nation, of a place, of a family, like a priest, is that Rosh, right? The Rosh corresponds to the Ras. The head, the front, the beginning, the chief, the choice is the best. The head, division, company, a band, right? The sum, the sum of it. Right? They say it's from an ancient word meaning to shake. But now notice this word here, Rosh, is the masculine. So in the Hebrew, we have the Rosh, which is a noun masculine, and we have Reshith, Reshith, which is the feminine. 
right? The feminine, right? Just to show you right here, you see the now masculine, the now feminine, right? So we talk about balancing the equation, right? That's why we study the scripts and we study it in the language, right? And we pay attention to these details, right? From an unused root, apparently meaning to shake the head, right? As the head is said to be most easily shaken. Now, the reason why we went here, right, to bring out right here, Ray Sheath, right, is that in this very first word, right, in the very first word, let's bring this up, the very first word of the Bible, or the very first, the, the first um, verse, this is the first verse, Bereshith bara Elohim eight Hashemayim ve'et ha'aret, Bereshith. In Reishith. Now, I'm going to highlight this word right here. You see it right there. It's a highlighted word. That's Be Reishith. In, Be, in, on Reishith. Right? On Reishith. And it's Be Reishith, not Bar Reishith, for the next reason I'm about to bring forward right here from the scripts. Now, Bara, which is the next word. Right? This next word right here is Bara. Bara is the verb. Right, bara. Let's bring it out right there. Bara. You see, bara, bara to create, to shape, to fashion, to shape, to fashion. Always, right. Always with Elohim, right, as subject, right, subject, object of the heavens and earth, individual man of new conditions, circumstances of transformations, right. Then we have the different parts of the verb, right. As you can see, different parts of the verb, right. Bring it down right here. The primitive root is absolutely to create in a qualified way to cut right to cut think about a craftsman cutting something right you're cutting something into shape right like cutting down and cutting wood right select the word bara can mean to select or feed right it's a formative process now after the colon and the hyphen when you look at strong's definition to show you how to read Strong's definition, the words choose, create, creator, cut down, dispatch, do, make fat, right? This is how the word, this primary word, bara, is translated elsewhere, right? Just to show that word right there. Now, this word bara, see, if it was speaking about gods, right, it would be like baru, 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 you know, or something of that form right there, baru. Right? You know, like Barahu, you know, like they, to say like they, you know, they created. But here it's saying that Elohim, the powers, right? We could say even the natures, the powers, the nature of nature, the power of powers is in singularity, right? And this is interesting because when we even look at the ancient Egypt and we go to the Neb Urcher, right? Neb Urcher, or some say Neb Urcher, Neb Urcher, Neb Urcher, Neb Urcher. Nebercher. Reminds me of Egeziavi here in the Ethiopic. But here just keeping it in the Elohim context. Because it's important that you get this right here. So one reading of this, Genesis 1 and 1, is like we have it. In the beginning, right, Elohim created, right, the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, Elohim. In the beginning. But it doesn't say the beginning. Bereshith. Right, Bereshith doesn't say in the beginning. It says in beginning or in Reshith. So the question here is who is Reshith? Right, who is Reshith? Right, so let's go right here, right, and let's look up. Uh, we're going to show you what we're going to look up, and we're going to show you who Elohim was speaking to in the very beginning. Right, so here we even see in the Hebrew beginning this, this father and mother. Right? Or even this mother and father. Right? Because Elohim is doing this in Reishith. Right? Is doing this in Reishith. Okay, principle. Right? Wisdom is the principle. Does it come out like that? Okay, it's the other principle. Right? Where it says principal. Right? Principal. Right? There we go right there. Look at this right here. Now, here we go to Mishle Shlomo. We go to the Mishle, the Masha, Mishlim, the parables, the allegories, the wisdom, right? The wisdom teachings, right? Of Solomon, right? And I like to even address the whole Amenemope areas of it because, yeah, he does say the sages, and as ancient sages, he wise, respect wise, right? Wise, respect wise. You know what I mean? I heard a Confucius saying, right? I'm not all into Confucius. 
you know, a little about him, but the saying was true, right? So that saying, you know, I would say too appropriately because it's true. But here in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 says, The fear, the reverence of Yahweh is the beginning. All right? Notice, Reishith. Right? Is the Reishith. The beginning of Da'at. Right? The beginning of Da'at. Da'at. That's the hidden cipher on the Kabbalah, on the Kabbalah, the Eitz Chaim. Eitz Ha Chaim. On the tree of life. That's the hidden cipher. Da'at. Knowledge. But fools. Right, fools, a veal, a veal, no, it's a veal, almost look like it's like a wheel, a wheel in, in ancient Hebrew, modern Hebrew, a veal, right? The a veal, the fools, despise what? Chokma. Now, it's Chokma we're speaking about in the Reishith. She is the Reishith. She is the Reishith. They despise what? They despise that divine feminine first principle. And the divine feminine first principle, the Reishith, is Chokma. Or some may enunciate as Chakma, Chakma, right? Chakma, right? Chokma, Chokma, wisdom and instruction and Musar. Musar is like discipline, correction, right? Discipline, correction. Now, here's the verse we're getting to right here, Proverbs 4 and 7. This is the proof verse. This is the first aspect of the proof verse, right? Where it says wisdom, who is wisdom in the Hebrew? Chokma, right? Chokma, right? We have Chokma, right? Chokma, almost like Ma, right? It's like Ma. Hey, Ma, 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 right? Chokma, right? Chokma, Chokma. So even the sound in the English, you know, so we know that all languages were one according to the Hebrew narrative until the Tower of Baba, right? But here we have wisdom. Wisdom, breaking down wisdom, Chokmah, the H2451. Skill, for example, skill in war. Wisdom, wiseness in administration. Shrewdness is wisdom. Wisdom, prudence in religious or like spiritual matters. Wisdom in that which is ethical or that which is really just, right? So here, notice it's a noun, feminine. I want to point it out, right? The noun feminine corresponding to Reishith. Corresponding to Reishith. Be Reishith. In beginning, in Reishith. In Chokma. In Chokma. Right? In Chokma. Now here we have, it's from the H2449. Right? Hakam. Hakam means to be wise. Hakam. Hakam to mean be wise, to teach wisdom, to make wise, to show oneself wise. Even in a sense, it can even be to deceive. Now, here's what's interesting, because the serpent, right, is often serpents from ancient times, often connected with wisdom. Now, the scriptures teach us, in James, it teaches us two kinds of wisdom. There's one from above, right? This is the true wisdom, the higher wisdom, and there's one from below, right? So it's twofold. Now, this also kind of links and segues with a lot of the true Gnostic writings. So here, the hakam is the primitive root to be wise. To be wise in what context? In mind, right? To be wise, right, in word, right? To be wise in act or in action, right? To be wise in mind. You see that triunity there? To be wise in mind, in word, and in act. Right? So here, here, here we have wisdom in the very beginning. Now, we're not finished yet. Notice what this, this line, let's read the sentence first. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And if all thy getting, get understanding. Let's bring up the Hebrew right here. Right? Let's go down here to the Tanakh right down here and bring the Hebrew. Okay? It says, Reishith. Uh-oh. Reishith. Notice. You see, Reishith, we highlighted it. Let's look at this right here. Reishith is the same H7225 word in the very beginning. Reishith. Reishith. In Reishith. Who is Reishith? Who is the beginning? Who is the principle? So in a sense, when we look at, at, at Genesis, right, at, at Bereshith, right, we almost have as above, like they say, so below, right, an act amongst the, the male, right, Elohim, Bara, right, Bereshith, 
in that womb, right? That womb of all, Reishith, Hakma, wisdom, right? So here we have Reishith. Let's read the line again right here. Reishith, Hakma, Kene, Hakma, Reishith, the beginning, the Reishith is Hakma, 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 Hakma. The beginning is so be reishith bara Elohim. Be hakma bara Elohim. In wisdom, in her, in she, bara, he, in singularity, the Elohim, the powers, right? The triple male, right? According to some of the Gnostics, first as a triple male, I think the, the Gnostic gospel of the Egyptians referred to Elohim as being the triple male, right? It says the Ab. Walid, Memphis Kedus, the Ab, Bain, Rahak Adosh. Reishith, Chakma, right? Reishith is Chakma, right? Chakma, right? Wisdom, wisdom, she is Reishith. So the Hebrew, we often refer to sometimes as the Hebrew Sophia, right? Because Sophia in the, in the, in the, uh, um, the Koine Coptic Greek is like the word for wisdom, but Chakma. Hakma, right? Reishith is Hakma, right? Hakma is Reishith. Kene, Kene means get, acquire. Kene from Kana, Kana. Very interesting word. Kana means to get, to acquire, to create, to buy, to possess. So it depends on the context, right, of it. Acquire, right? Get, acquire. Right? Even in let's say buy or possess or create. But when we get to the basic our root is to get, to acquire, to obtain. And now the A sense is of Elohim in originating. Elohim Hila Him in creating. Hila Him in redeeming. Right? The sense of kine. Right? Kone. Right? The kone. The possessor. Right? Eve. Hawa. Right? The earthly would say woman acquiring, acquiring knowledge, acquiring wisdom, right? Let's scroll down here. But the kana can also mean to erect because we also have the kana, right? The kana, right? That reed is the kana too. The kana is the reed. Like we said, cannabis is in the Hebrew Torah, right? The kana bosa, the sweet cane, kana bosa, right? So we have kana and also el kana, right? Often translated as the, the, the jealous God, but more correctly, the zealous, the Kana. He's the Kana El, right? He is the, the Kana El, El Kana. He is the power of the Kana, right? The power erect, the power to create, the power to procure, to like attain, like acquisition, right? So here it's saying, Reishith Chakma, Kene Chakma, Kene acquire Chakma, get the Chakma. Right? That's why it's the first and the most important lesson. Right? If a Hebrew Israelite doesn't know that, then you have to start all over right? from the very beginning. Because we're going to show you how significant wisdom, the divine feminine right? Hebrew principle, divine feminine in the Hebrew Bible. Here it is. Second part of the verse. Ua bekal kinan kinyanika. U bekal kinyanika. And in all, u and be by way of on call, call all, u be call, right? U be call, right? And on all, right? And in all, kinyanika, kinyanika. So we have kinyanika, which also, very interestingly enough, here comes from the same, right? Come from the same root, right? We have the kinyan, kinyan. From the Kana, Kinyan is a thing acquired, acquisition, right? To purchase this, to acquire this. Because when you acquire Hakma, right? You know, you acquire wisdom, right? So here it says, where are we right here? Okay, here it says, Ube call Kinyanika, Kine, Bina. And in all of your acquisition, in all of your acquiring, even of Hakma and of wisdom, it says, kine, 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 acquire, like buy, get, acquire, bina, acquire, bina, bina, 
in the Afro-Asiatic pointing modern Hebrew, they'll say, Uvakal, Uvakala, Kineanicha, Kine Vina. That's more like the modern way Hebrew may be said. But now we're pointing this out right here because here's the connection of Reishith, right, directly to Hakma, right, directly to Hakma, right, to Hakma. What kind of Ma? Hakma, right? We could say, in that sense, she would be like, in that sense, if we look at creation to being like a matrix, she would be like the mother of the matrix. Right, and Robenu, our rabbi Yeshua Hamushia, he even brings that out, right, even in the the Gospels, right. I'm going to show you that hopefully right here, here, here. Now, why is this important? Take note, take note right here. Why is this important? Let's go forward over here to chapter, let's go to chapter 8. Let's go to chapter 8. We're still in Proverbs, chapter 8. So we started out with. Genesis chapter 1 and 1 went directly into the Hebrew, the first word, Bereshith, in Reishith. Now we've defined that Reishith, according to the scripture, according to the wisest man, that received wiseness, wisdom, Hakma of Adonai, of Adonai, right? Shlomo, right? Ha-Melech, right? Now he brings out for the Talmudim, for his, his disciples, who he called his sons, right? Brings out for the disciples. Right, that wisdom is the beginning, is the reishith. Remember that in Genesis chapter 1, it could have used rosh, karosh, which is the masculine head, it could have used that, but it here uses reishith, which is the feminine head, right? The feminine head, right? But it's now defining that the beginning, the reishith, was wisma, and in her, right? In wisdom. Right? That's why when you read in the scriptures, even in some of the translation, it says about Yahweh Hey Hak Adosh Bruku Bruka Hashem. That says like in wisdom you have created, you know, you've created all things in wisdom. How often have we come across that particular um um translation or that kind of wordage, right? And you've created all in wisdom. Right? You created all in wisdom. Literally. Right, directly according to the Hebrew scriptures and the proper Hebrew interpretation, literally that's what he did. Right? Now, here, 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 this is interesting here, because those who are Ethiopian, uh, Tawahido, um, Christian, Christianoch, those who are like Orthodox Christians, y'all no doubt have read this part before. You'll know that this, from Proverbs chapter 8, there's a portion of this that's contained in what is called the prayer of the fraction. There's something known as the prayer of the fraction. In fact, we could probably bring it up because I think we do have, we might have the, the PDF of the liturgy in the prayer of the fraction. But first things first, right? Here, here, here. Now, let's scroll to the 22nd verse. Read the whole thing, study the whole thing, but let's scroll down to 22nd verse. Now, some would tell you that Oh, well, Proverbs were just plagiarized from Amenemop and, and the Ptah Hetep. Listen, wise men say what wise men say. And wise men respect wise men. Like we say, real recognize real. Right? So if that chapter and a portion is like a chapter and a portion that appears from the translation. We still are studying the hieratic and the hieroglyphs. You know, can one say, you know, if a white man who is used to King James Bible is translating something from ancient Egypt, well, King James Bible is high literature. So he might just make the translation sound like it's the same thing because that's what he's used to. I want to look at the glyphs of myself. But even if that was so, is this found? Is this found in ancient Egypt? I'm not saying it's not there because we said real recognize real. But as we get to Proverbs chapter 8, Right, verse 22, in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22, this is all wisdom speaking, right? Wisdom, she is testifying. What's interesting about the book of Proverbs, I don't know if many of you all get it, one to say, oh, that's the Proverbs of Solomon, yes. But notice how Solomon sets up his classroom. Solomon is setting up his classroom. He first, like, you know, he's introduced. He said, yes, welcome to the school, welcome to the, 
to the to the college, the L O J Kaloji. You know, welcome to the school, welcome to the class right here. Um, and now y'all need to get this, y'all need to get that. And now let me introduce the teacher. It's like what Solomon does in in Proverbs is almost like a warm up act, right? He basically introduces wisdom, hakma. He introduces her and she. In other words, the wisest man is introducing wisdom to his disciples. And who does he introduce? He introduces wisdom. He introduces her. Right? He introduces her. In fact, take note, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. My son, Bene, my disciple, right? hear the instruction of thy father, thy patriarch, and forsake not the law, the Torah, right? the direction, instruction of thy mother, of thy matriarch. So the true Hebrew way is that divine balance. Right? And it's sad because a lot of people who have been, you know, into Christianities or, you know, even maybe some form of Israelitism or, or Judaism or whatever. This part, sadly, many of your teachers really don't know it. You know what I mean? Many of your teachers, because if they didn't know it, you know, whenever we talk about this, we always hear crickets. We always hear cr crickets. No one is saying anything. And we, we're tying it together right here. Let's bring this in. Verse 22. Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, right? Jehovah. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Did you hear that? Did you read that? Hear wisdom, right? Wisdom, the same one we're identifying with the first word in the Hebrew, right? In the Hebrew Bible or the Hebrew Bible, the Torah. The first word in the Torah identifies. The very first word in the Torah identifies the divine, feminine, we could say the Hebrew principle, the Hebrew divine, feminine principle, the very first word in the Torah. Now that we've connected Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7 from the Hebrew, right? See, the English says that wisdom is the principle, right? They didn't even say wisdom is the beginning. But we already showed you the, the former verse that says that the beginning, right, the reishith, right, the fear, the reverence, the respect of Yahweh is the reishith, is, is, is the beginning, right, is the chokmah, right, of da'at, right, is the wisdom of da'at. Like some people might have knowledge, they may know, right, but they may not know how. See, that know-how is wisdom. What is wisdom? Like knowledge, wisdom, understanding, understanding. Well, knowledge, that means you know. Wisdom is you know how. You know how to use that knowledge and understanding or understanding to bring it to fulfillment. So here, wisdom, she says that Yahweh hey, possessed her. She says, possess me in the beginning. Right? In the beginning. Look at that. Kana. You see the word Kana? You see that word Kana? You see the word kana right there, right? The same kana, right? The kana, but some. The kana, the same kana right there. Possess me in the beginning, in the what? In the reishith. <laughs> Possessed her in the reishith. So she's saying that she was in the reishith. She was possessed by Hailehim Elohim even in the very beginning. And this is what Moshe testifies to, right? That one verse, the first verse, is a whole, you could say, is the first time summed up. The 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 Zetepi, right? Zatepi, the Zetepi, right? Is the first time the Kedem is the Kedem summed up. That first verse, right, of Bereshith. She says, Yahweh hey, possess me in the Reshith, the beginning of His way. Before, do you get that word before? Right, Kedem. You see the Kedem and the Kedma. We say Kedamawi, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, Kedamawi, right? The East. What does the Keda mean in the Hebrew? The Keda means the East, means antiquity, means the first time. Remember what Gormawi Nugusin guessed, the conquering line of the tribe of the root of David, he said, Before man appeared in the garden, our dynasty has existed and will continue to exist. Ah. The East, antiquity, the front, that which is before. Kedam, the Kedam, the Kedamawi, the Kedam, the Kedma. A four time. Now here's the noun masculine. Note that, the noun masculine, the front. Front in the sense, in the Hebrew, when we say front, is the front or the east. 
So the east would be like the Kedem, right? In front, the Mount of the East, the ancient times, the ancient times, the first times as the ancient Kamitiyu, the Mitzrayim, the ancient Egyptians speak about the Zet Tepi, right? We Hebrews talk about the Kedem, right? The ancient time, the fourth time, the ancient time from of old, from the earliest time, from the earliest Iowa, anciently of old, the beginning, the east, eastward, to or toward the east, right? Look to the east, the Kedem, the front part, the Kedem, right? The Kedem. So it says before, right? The Kedem, his works of old. Before his works of old. So right here, wisdom basically testifies to it all right here. So when we read, even in Bereshit chapter 3, that the man, right, has become that Adam, Adam, Atum, Atom, right, Atom, right, Adam has become, the man has become like one of us. Right? Does it say that? The man has become as one of us? So, so who's the us here? Hmm? Some say it was angels. Some even say, well, it was the Father speaking to the Son. But wait, hold on. I thought that the Son, speaking of Yeshua Ha Notri, Yeshua Ha Moshiach, I thought He is that Word, right? That Word that's in the bosom, in the chest of the Father, that Word, right? That has become flesh, right? That Word become flesh. So when Elohim says in Genesis chapter 3, Right? The man has become as one of us. That word that he's speaking, according to the theology, the messianic and true Christian theology, that word that he's speaking is Yeshua. Right? Not incarnate, but is Yeshua. Because if Yeshua is the word of the Father, then when the Father speaks a word, he is speaking Yeshua, according to the Nazarene and the messianic and true Christian theology. But who is he speaking to? Remember, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, according to true Nazarene teaching, the true Hebrew triunity, is one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit is not three. Right? Not like three gods or something. No, it is one. He is one. Right? Shema Yisrael. Yahweh Eloheinu. Yahweh Echad. That's the reason why we say that. He who be who he be. Our power. He who be who he be is one. Why do we say he who be who he be twice? The Father, the Son, my right? Eloheinu, Spirit of Power. Here we have her saying in verse 23, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. Right? The Olam. So we have the Olam. The Olam is a long duration. Olam is like antiquity. Olam is like to the furthest horizon. Olam is like time indefinite, but getting breaking down the word in the strongs, we have something concealed, a vanishing point, right out of mind, right for a long time. Somebody said like Olam, Le Olam, like forever. Our Hebrew sense of forever is to a time indefinite. It's like to say it's beyond like the vanishing point on the horizon, the horizon. But what's interesting about the word, right? We have Alam, and then we also have Olam can also be world. Right, Olam, right, bring it down. Olam can also be world, right? So we say, Le Zelalem, Olam, Le Olam, like world without end. So we have world, right, right, we have world, okay, Ad Netzach, right? So let's compare that right there, right? So the Olam, she says she was set up, Nasak, no Nasak is poured out. Ooh, she was set up. So KJV says set up. But when we read this Hebraically, we know that she says she was poured out, right? And poured out, Nasak, is used in the sense of pouring out like casting metal or even anointing a king, pouring out. Pouring out libations, pouring out. To pour out something to set, also in the sense of being installed. So she was poured out and she was installed, right? As that, you could say, the, the divine, right? That, that matriarch, that, that, that womb in a sense. So the divine feminine aspect. So it's not like the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant counterfeit Christians say, right? Where they make everything male. It's all male, male, male. Because we read the Hebrew, we don't see it that way. Understanding the Hebrew. So she's saying that she was poured out. Almost like a libation. She was almost cast like metal. 
or almost say like one installed, right, from everlasting, right, from the most distant time, from the beginning. Look at the word beginning. Remember the word in the early part of this vlog, the H7218? Rosh here is the masculine, scroll down here, is the noun masculine, right? Reishith is a noun feminine. So already in, in Genesis, in Bereshith, we already have here because of wisdom, because of the proverb, because of wisdom, the male and the female aspect, that divine double helix. Right? That divine double helix. Right? Or ever the earth was. Note, note what she says, Kedem. Again, the Kedem. Right? The Kedem of the ancient times, the Kedem. Know what the Kedem is? The East, antiquity, right? That which was before. So before this present world age, there was a first time. Even in Moshe's first book, if you can read it and understand it as an intelligent biblical Hebrew reader, right? You would recognize that that first verse is summing up a far ancient antiquity, right? Because there's a gap, right, in the narrative right between verse 1 which is given the overview and then verse 2 is beginning off after right a cataclysm right after a cataclysm we can prove that with the scripture because he did not create the earth right without form he says so in the prophets so when it says there was without form something had happened and we have jeremiah right the next prophet to bring in that illumination this is these are things that was known from the ancient times right but give thanks for the writers of the scripture right to actually codify these things for us of these last times so now what wisdom is saying is that before his works of old his most ancient works right she goes on to say when there were no depths i was brought forth when there was no fountains abounding with water What's the second verse of the Bible? How does the second verse of the Bible read? You know how it reads. Does it talk about water? It talks about water in the second verse of the Bible. But notice, wisdom says that she was there when? After there was water? After there was depths? She was a, she was no afterthought. She was there in the very begin. She is the very beginning. Wisdom is the very beginning. This is why Yeshua Robeinu, our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Hanotri. That's why Jesus, right? That's why he says, even in the Gospels, that wisdom is justified by all of her children. So how do we pray? Our Father, right? Abinu Sheba Shemayim, our Father. Abu Nezebe Semayat, right? Our Father who art in heaven, right? But we have a mother, right? That's why it says, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, male and female created he them. Male and female, right? And because his creation, remember, is all in her, is in wisdom, in hakma, be reishith. Now she says in verse 23 that she was set up, or in the Hebrew, nasak, she was poured out, right, from everlasting, from, from time indefinite, right, from the beginning, right? And the beginning here is the Rosh. The Rosh is the masculine head, right? So she identifies that her origin was from he, even he who be who he be, high him, right? Or ever the earth was. So, or ever the earth was is before the earth was. So she said that she was here before the earth. What do we read about in the first book of Moshe called Genesis, right? In, in verse, verse 2 of chapter 1, and the earth was without form and void. But then does not Jehovah say in the prophet that he did not create the earth without form? KJV translated as he didn't create the earth in vanity. But when you look at the word, the Hebrew word is tohu. It's the same word that's used here. The earth was without form and void. In the proper Hebrew, the earth had become. Something had happened between Genesis 1 and 1. Genesis 1 and 1 is summing up the Zetepi, the Kedem. The first times. We are living in this present earth age. And the Ethiopic calculation is 7,514 of this present earth age. But it does not say and mean that this earth is just 7,000 or 8,000 years old. 
In fact, from the true Hebrew perspective, when they say the earth is maybe millions and zillions of years indefinite, it's, it's actually true. That is actually true, right? Based on a correct reading of the Hebrew. Because it says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim, the Ruach of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters, right? But now, what does she say in verse 24? What does wisdom say? Remember, wisdom is testifying here in Proverbs chapter 8. Imagine that, chapter 8, that number that implies infinity, right? And even duality. When there were no depths, when there was no what? When there was no to home, uh-oh, I was brought forth. She was what? Chul. We have the word chil. Right? Heal or chayil too. Chayil come from that as well, power. But in this sense, it's power that is spinning. Right? It's a twist. You know what that is, brothers and sisters? That's sacred geometry right there. Right? The H2342, sacred geometry, the twist to, to whirl, to dance. That's that, that's that golden mean ratio. That's that pi and phi at work. Mm hmm When she was what? Brought forward. Right? When she was what? She was brought forward. Now, here's the word for brought forward. Does she mean she danced? In a sense, that spiral is when the spiral, when we're speaking about the spiral in the beginning, that she says she was brought forth, right? The sense of being born, right? She was birthed. But the birth of that spiral, you see Strong's bringing out here a primitive root properly to twist, to whirl, right? To whirl. And notice how that, that golden mean ratio Right, that phi and that pi, right, is is embedded in all creation. Right? Notice what it says. It says to twist or whirl in a circular or spiral manner. What happens when a line, right, the linear meets a circle, the womb? What happens when a line meets a circle? Right? What happens? It creates a spiral. When the line meets a circle, it creates a spiral. Right? And this is what we have right here. So when we study the Hebrew it brings out these, um, these higher scientific, esoteric um, physics. Physics is embedded in the Hebrew as well. Right? You know, that's why some peoples, you know, not leave the Hebrew <laughs> alone. Right? Because they recognize what's really in there. You could look at it religiously if you want to. Mm -hmm. But we're applying like Hakma. That's why it says get wisdom in the beginning. Some can only look at it religiously because they didn't listen to the instruction to get wisdom. They didn't get wisdom, right? It says they don't have a reverence of Yahweh, right? Because the reverence, a respect of he who be who he be, the Almighty, right? Will make one to have a a a a, a reverence. That reverence, right, is that is that is that reshith, right? Is that beginning, that beginning of da'at, right, and knowledge. And this must be known, right? To dance, to writhe, so forth and so on. But the first part of it brings out the perfect sense of it. This is the verb. Right? When she was brought forward. When there was no depths. Remember we said the line meeting the cipher. Right? And now creating the spiral. Now she being brought forward. And she says this all happened and occurred at a time when there was no depths. There was no fountains abounding with water. So there was no water. And she already says that she was brought forth. Right? She was set up. She was poured out. So notice, in verse 23, we get the water, the idea of something poured out like water, the wave, right? And then in verse 24, right, we get it, she was brought forward. We get the spiral, right? But notice what she says. She was there, Hakma, the divine feminine, the Hebrew principle in the beginning. She was there with he, even he who be who he be, before the earth, before there was any earth. People talk the Big Bang. They haven't computated this right there before the earth was even, before there was any depths, before there was any fountain abounding with water. So this is why we say in Genesis chapter 1, right, in Genesis chapter 1, when we speak about the original creation, the original creation is the very first verse. That's the original creation. How old? Millions, billions, zillions. In fact, it's kind of hard to calculate time because there was no luminaries. Time is accounted in three main ways, by the stars, by the sun, or by the moon. Uh, how else is time accounted? By the stars, 
the timekeepers. You know about the timekeepers. All right? We're talking about the timekeepers here in Bereshit Aleph, in the first chapter of Bereshit. That by the stars, there was no stars. Right? There was no stars. There, there was, she's saying before there was anything. Right? Before there was anything. But now, in now turning the direction towards the earthly plane, or what would become the earthly plane, she's saying that before the mountains were settled, mm -hmm. before the hills, she says that she was brought forth. Now she mentions the, the khil, or the khul, the khil, and the khul again. Right? That circular spin, that spiral, right? that sacred geometry. She mentioned the sacred geometry again. Right, where it says in a circular or spiral manner. Right, see ones and ones, you caught up on loss and mistranslation, right, or loss and limited translation. The KJV is very limited. It was meant for the Gentiles, not for us, Beta Israel. It's was not meant for us. A stepping stone. Don't stumble over the stepping stone. Right, it was just it was meant for them, you know, so they could get an idea. And we see how they messed up the idea they got in counterfeit Christianity. You know, there's all maleism. Right, it's all male. They they never even noticed the mother right there. They ignored, you know, we could say the mother in the very beginning. Right? Here, 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 verse 26 it says, While as yet he had not made the earth. Oh my goodness. While as of yet he had not Asa made the earth. For he had made the Eretz. What does it say in the very first word? It says, In Reishith. In Reishith Elohim Bara. Bara. Right? He bara. He, he created. Right? He bara. Right? Et ha shemayim wa et ha aret. The heavens. Right? And the earth. And she says, nor the field. The fields were not even made. Nor the highest part of the dust. Right? So the afar. The afar was not even there. Right? There wasn't even, there wasn't even dust. Not even space dust. These are people, we come from space. That wasn't even there just yet. Right? Before it made the highest parts of the world. Right of the tabel. Now tabel is an interesting word right here. Generally, it's world. It's a noun. Notice it's, it's a noun feminine. It's the earth as the moist and therefore the inhabitable parts of the earth. Right, the inhabitable parts of the earth. Now they say by extension the globe. That's garbage there. No, it's about the inhabitable parts of the earth. No global. No balem here. Right, the inhabitable parts. So the inhabitable parts of the earth is where there's moisture. Right, it's where there's moisture. Right? That's why all the civilizations arose in valleys, river valleys. The Nile River Valley, you know, Suma, Akkad, Kalna, Babylon, that valley over there. Verse 27, when he prepared the heavens, look at that. When he prepared, kun, you see the word kun, kun. You see the word kun? Kun to make firm, to be stable, kun, right? And mekonin, it's interesting when we look at mekonin, right? Makonin, mekonin links to that. Right, to establish in that sense. But he prepared the heavens. She says, I was there. She was where? She was there when he prepared the heavens. Not when he created, but he prepared it to be created. Right? When he set a compass, he said a what? A compass, the hug. He, he set the hug, right? The hug. That's the circle. The, the, the circuit, the compass, the vault of the heavens, the double heavens, the double arches. Right? The circle, the compass upon the face, right? The face of the deep, right? Of the depth, right? When he established the clouds above, when he straightened, strengthens, Slika, strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea, to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Remember, all of this that she's saying here. Is not pertaining to what we read after Genesis 1 and 1, but what occurred before Genesis 1 and 2. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. Look at the one brought up with him. Amon. You see the Amon? <laughs> Uh-oh. The Amon. What's the Amon? Amon in the Hebrew is the H525. It's the Hebrew word for artificer. Amon is an architect. Amon is a master workman. Amon is a skilled workman. The Amon. And it comes from the Hebrew sense of training. It comes from the Aman. Aman. Aman means to support, to confirm, to be faithful, 
to support, to confirm, to be faithful. A foster father is an aman. You see what it says, foster father? A foster mother or a nurse is an aman. The pillars, the supporters of the door is the aman, right? The aman. So when one's and one's talk about ancient Egypt, yeah, I see that there, but here we get the intel, right? That we don't find, right? That we don't find in the glyphs. We see whole words on the glyphs, right? But the verbs and getting to the roots is the Hebrew truth. Remember Moshe? He was learning all the wisdom of the Egypts and mighty in word and deed. After all, right? He was told to be a god to Pharaoh. He was to Huti, right? On that level, if you overstand. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part, see the tebel, there's a tebel, of his earth, of his aret, and my delights were with the sons of men, right? So this also implies, right, that there were, right, even Adam before Adam. Let us make Adam in our image. Now these other Adam, we don't know if they were made in the image. We know at here, this present creation, he said, let us make man, Adam, in our image and after our likeness, right? She says, now therefore, hearken to me, O children, for blessed, right? For Asher, Asher, right, are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction, be wise, refuse it not, right? Blessed is the man, Asher, Asher is the man that heareth me. So blesses the man, the male, masculine that heareth me, that heareth she, watching daily at my gates, at her gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life, findeth chai, chayim, right, and obtaineth favor. So whoever find the Hebrew divine feminine principle known as hakma, hakma, wisdom, obtains favor obtains ratzon, ratzon with Yahweh. So if we want to obtain favor with Jahov, he who be who he be, first we must find, right, we must find she, right? Then we find life, and then we obtain favor with Yahweh. But he that sinneth, what did she say right here in verse 36? He that ucketh up against me wrongeth his own soul, right? Look at the soul, the word for soul, nefesh. The H 5315, Nefesh. Nefesh, soul, life, living creature, the soul, right? Let's scroll down here, right here. We can get into the look at look. The soul is she too. So he hurts she. She that's so important to thee, your soul, your psyche. And the soul basically comes down in the Hebrew science, the breathing creature. The breathing creature. Right? The breathing creature is the animus or the soul. Right? And she is she. So she says that he who sinneth against her wrongeth his own psyche, his own nefesh, his own soul. All they that hate me, that hate Hakma, that hate the divine feminine principle, love death. And now we wonder why counterfeit Christianity and the ways of this Gentile, the time the Gentiles are leading to death and destruction. Right? Because they never brought this out. They never brought this out. One verse here, just to seal up right here with Robeno, right? Our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbi, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Wisdom, right, is justified. Let's put wisdom is just, right? Wisdom is just, right? Wisdom is just. We have five verses here, right? Five verses. Is it five verses? Yeah, five verses right here, right? To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward, right? The twisted, the, the what is this? Tapuka, tapuka, tapuka is like the perverse, the twisted, the perverse. My right? tongue shall be cut out. In Matthew 11, 1, 1, 19, 11, 19, the son of man, right? The Ben Adam came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom, but chokmah, or here in the coin of Greek, Sophia, we say the Hebrew Sophia, but Sophia is justified, is made righteous, um, diakiu, right, to render righteous, 
or right to show to exhibit righteous right to declare to pronounce to be just and justify but hokma is justified of her children right of her children and then this verse here to seal this up right here and it's also repeated in Luke that verse right there here's James right in James right James chapter 3 verse 15 there's two kinds of wisdom there's wisdom counterfeit <laughs> and there's the wisdom true the Hebrew wisdom is the wisdom true now there's the other wisdom that he talks about in James 3 and 15 this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. There's the wisdom that come from below, like human wisdom, right? You know, make believe. James chapter 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above, the higher wisdom, is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good, and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So here, 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 the Hebrew wisdom, right? The Hebrew wisdom, even from the Bereshis, right? The Bereshis. I know some will say, oh, but that's Ma'at there. Yeah, you could say that. Ma'at is a slice. Ma'at is a slice of the Hebrew Hokmah, right? Ma'at is a slice of it. I would say, actually, you know, uh, Sheshat, you know, a little more so, you know, and Sheshat, where do we have Sheshat right here? Some of you might not know about Sheshat before we go in the outro right here. Sheshat. Basically, this is Sheshat right here, here, here. Right? You know, she's the one that has the Kana. <laughs> remember the Kana? You remember the Kana? We showed you the Kana all through um, Shlomo's Proverbs. The Kana. Right? The Kana. And interesting that she was the wife of Tehuti. Remember Moses? His Moshe married a what? An Ethiopian. Right? And Miriam, his sis. Oh, big sis was upset with that, right? And she spoke out of out of class, right? And was put out of class for a time. Sheshat, this is Sheshat, right? Sheshat. She was said to be the goddess of wisdom. She wears a cannabis leaf, the kana. You see the kana there, right? You see the kana in the Hebrew scrolls. So the Hebrew scrolls actually in the Hebrew, when read properly, preserves the ancient wisdom, right? But when read improperly, well. I think people already experienced 400 plus years of counterfeit Christianity, white supremacy, white racism, right? So the kana, the kana, you see the kana, the kana bosom, right? The cannabis, the kana, the kana, right? Was that the amon? That's the amon, <laughs> right? The amon, right? That's, that's the architect, right? That's the architect, that's the craftsman, right? They say he means the hidden one. No, what's hidden is that he's the architect. Right? Was hidden, the real architect it was what was hidden, right? Later on. Right? So here, here, here. So cannabis in ancient Egypt. Gonna pick up on that right there. Yes I, Rastafari. So here, here, here. Let's uh seal this up with this right here. Like, share, and subscribe. Check out LOJS.org. Also Rastafari Israelites on the YouTubes. Yes I, Rastafari. I and I approve of this message. Yes, 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 yes.